book collectors, hobbyists, fab some besties. Now that we have our front door with our magnetic wallpaper, I totally want to add on to this space. We can use two more wooden panels to extend the room. I get these from the Dollar Tree. They are $3 each, but I've also seen them on Amazon. Okay, so we're gonna glue just two boards together. These boards are from the Dollar Tree. They're not always cut perfectly, so that's something we have to deal with. I am getting a tiny little gap in my wall here. And the easiest way to hide that is with something busy, like wallpaper. But I kind of don't want there to be like this white band right here and then the wallpaper continues. So maybe we should add the wallpaper going all the way around. I'm going to add another strip of brown wood on top of the door to fill in that gap, taking it all the way to the ceiling so we don't have to worry about covering that area with wallpaper. I cut half inch strips of balsa wood. This is a really soft wood and it's easy to cut with an X-Acto knife. I paint them white. Let's paint the back wall of our room extension white as well. And I just had another idea. So we don't have to put wallpaper around the door. Hmm, but that will have to come up later. Cover the floor with contact paper. Add the white strips for the baseboards. Add the magnetic paper with the adhesive to the top of the wall. Add another strip underneath. And now we can add our magnetic wallpaper. Ah. That would have been so cool if it lined up right. Okay, I am absolutely loving the ability to change my wallpaper whenever I want. We could even use the same idea on the bottom of the wall if we wanted to change that color as well. But this can get a little pricey. At Michael's, this was $17.99 for five sheets. However, I found some on Amazon that are 10 sheets for $18.88, but those won't arrive until tomorrow. And I'll let you know if they work out. Now we have a much larger room. I don't love how my wallpaper just stops by the door. So let's make something to cover that up. On some scratch paper, let's plan out a design. My paper is eight and a half inches wide and I'm going to glue it so it is 14 inches tall. This is just some paper left over from a bad print. Don't pay attention to this side. We're going to flip it over, measure up two inches from the bottom. On the opposite diagonal corner, I measure over two inches from the edge. Then we're going to draw a diagonal line connecting the two points. See that? Draw a line every two inches going all the way up. Then at the corners, we're going to make a straight line going down just like that. That's going to be pretty steep, but we got to work with what we got. Now that we have a plan, let's start cutting. I cut three inch strips of balsa wood. I go over to my little guide and I'm going to subtract the width of the boards, lightly sketching an inner line, then measure it. Mine is eight and a quarter inches by one and three quarters. I cut wood to those measurements, cut the three inch strips to go around it, now we could glue this in the back and then these on top to make a box, but I'm gonna put this going right down the center. Glue two pieces on the ends and one piece on top to make a box with openings on both sides. All right, one down, many more to go. However, on the next box, we don't need to worry about gluing down the bottom, just the top and the sides. So let's just subtract the width of the board for the top and the front and back. Measure the center rectangle, cut a board to fit, then two for the sides and one for the top. We're gonna glue this one in the center, just like before. Then the two pieces on the sides. Then we're gonna just glue this right onto the first box, lining it up on this edge here. Press and hold for a minute or two. 
Then move on to the next shelf. We're making this one the same way as the last one, only a little shorter. Then glue it on top again and again and again and again. We have seven shelves here, each one two inches tall, giving us 14 inches, which means it should reach the ceiling of our room. Let's just put it in the room and we can turn it this way and use it to separate the front door from this room, giving us stairs to the top floor that doesn't actually exist and storage on both sides. We have some shelving right there and over here as well. We could even turn it to the side to open up this space. Let's paint it. I'm choosing to paint it white because I think it'll go well with the rest of my room. This is taking a little bit of time there are a lot of little corners here and two sides. Ah, I didn't wait for the glue to dry all the way before I started painting. And then some of my stairs started to warp. No, I had to completely remake the top two. And now I have to wait while waiting. Let's use some leftover wood to make a thinner table. This one is actually the desk from Summer and Callie's old dorm room. Here is a split piece of wood. I think we can use that part right there. I cut it at one and three quarter inches. I have some quarter inch strips left over from the other day. I cut a few to four and a half inches. I cut a second large board. I take the thin strips and glue them onto the outer edge of one of the boards on all four corners. Let's add the second board, one inch from the ends to make a thin little table. Let's add some more quarter inch pieces across this area, just so it looks a little thicker. I glued two more layers on top. Once the glue has dried, I'm going to paint it brown to match the door. I have a little wood left over. I cut it into one and a quarter inch pieces, then cover the top with contact paper so they match the floor. And I made a larger one for the very top. Our bookcase has been repaired, it's painted, and it's now dry. And I'm gluing the covered boards onto the steps. I glued a few supports onto the back right over the seams, then paint them to match, giving us a bookcase that also functions as stairs. I have seen these stairs in so many homes and I've been wanting to make them in miniature for a long time. Add a few of our miniature doll books to fill the shelves and add more detail to this space. I really like that this bookcase is freestanding so we can move it around wherever we want. If we place it like this, we get the feeling that there are two different spaces. So we can change the wallpaper and try out different coordinating paper. All right, we have a lot going on here. We could even add some of our other box rooms like our kitchen to expand the scene. We are pretty much making a dollhouse one room at a time. Stair slash bookcase, check. They are a little narrow and steep, but I don't hear the dolls complaining. And now Minnie Toya has a place to store more of her books. Thank you for joining us while we made a bookcase that also works as stairs for the dollhouse like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell and follow us on Instagram at MyFroggyStuff, the Frog Vlog, and Bella of My Froggy Stuff. And we will see you next time.